All right, this is a, kind of a side tangent to the Oh Susanna project I'm working on, and I thought it might be good to show some of you how to do uh, a, like a, mul a multi-track of your own instrument takes so that you can kind of cut and splice things together to make a really good uh, set, a, a track of that one part. Um, you know, for me, I'm not a, a guitar or ukulele player by nature. I'm a percussionist, and so it's hard for me to really make a good track, and I have to usually do overdubbing and uh, splice together the better takes into one cohesive track. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate that process. Now, I don't normally do this in Audacity. Uh, it, to me, it's too hard to do it in Audacity. I have, I use Sonar uh, Platinum to do my recording projects usually and um, when I'm doing live recording of sound singing or vocal tracks or instrumental tracks that I'm playing um, I will use the looping set so I will do it several times over and then I can usually splice together a good tra uh, take out of the the, the different tr um, tracks that I've d recorded in that process uh, but unfortunately it's not as easy to do this in audacity so uh, it's a little bit more painful but again it's free so you, you get what you get so here's uh, adding a mono track okay and I'm gonna record my ukulele part a few times and then I'll show you how to kind of edit and splice it together and I'm just gonna do the first um, I'll do the chorus actually I will do the chorus part of O oh Susanna So actually that's good. You heard some horrible mistakes and that's of course what we try to avoid when we're recording. Um, better to be, uh, better to play your part. You don't have to spend as much time editing if you're better at performing. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play back and I'm gonna really lower the volume so I can just barely hear that just to kind of keep uh, where I'm at in the recording process. Now, one of the other things is, I'm not sure if this is due to the lag of um, the recording. Sometimes you have lag where what you hear and then what the microphone picks up, puts in re recording, comes in a, a few milliseconds later. So sometimes we have to deal with that in, in editing and we have to scooch things over to get rid of that lag that happens in recording. And, and that happens with most recording softwares. You have to deal with the uh, uh, latency is the is the appropriate term for that. You have to deal with the latency of playback and, and the capturing of new sounds and that kind of thing. So uh, that is something that we do have to deal with um, when recording. But I have one take of the ukulele part there for the chorus. I will do another one. So I'll add another track. And I'll record again. I'm going to set it back to the beginning. So that was a little bit better, obviously, but not quite good at this at the very end. So what I really want to do is make sure that I get that little, the the second half of it better. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another track. I'm going to bring that down again, and I will add another track, and just do the last couple chords when I get there. Yeah, I think there is a, a bit of lag in terms of the recording versus the playback because I can, uh, I could feel it that time. All right, so uh, you know, do it until you find what's acceptable for you. Uh, obviously, that last take I noticed right here, it looks like it's flattening out. I might, I may be recording just a little bit hot on the uh, volume level. 
So there may be a just a hint of distortion in there. I I know I, I think I got a little closer to the microphone that time with the with the ukulele, so it's a little bit louder. So I can bring that down. But yeah, I think I clipped a little bit there because you can see it's flat. Oops. Come on. Play right there. Yeah. So I uh, obviously one of the things I, I I'm going to do at first is we're going to move the tracks over. So let me I'm just going to go ahead and delete this stuff here. Okay. Uh, but it moved. So let me see here. Um, I know another software you can do a split track. Uh, cut. No. Split, there we go, control I is the split track, okay. So that I can split these right there because I know, and control I is the shortcut, so I can split there, and then I can split here, and that way I can actually move the tracks around. Um, and I think now I should be able to select this one side and just get delete all this dead space here. And it, oh, it still moved it over, dang it. Okay, well. That's fine. I'll just scooch it over this way. All right, so I cut the end of that, or the, or the beginning dead space off the beginning. We call that pre-roll. Let me see here. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, two, three, four. So this is count one of the beginning of the piece. So let me see if I can line that up visually. See, I want to mute these two. And unmute these two so I can line the click up with the so we have several different ways of doing this obviously this part right here yeah the bad notes so let's see um, so we can do it one of two ways. I can leave this track intact the way it is and just use the envelope tool here. So where was that spot? Yeah. So right there, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a node for the envelope right there. Okay. I double click, I create a node. And now I can just shrink that down to nothing. Now I can have a fade on it so it fades out. Okay. And again, in Audacity, this might be the easiest way to do it because um, we don't have we don't have the line the, the timing to line up with like in in um, digital audio workstations. We have uh, the time track up here would be laid with overlaid with a um, a tempo uh, mark as well, 4-4, four, four, the tempo, I think I'm going 157 here. Uh, so I could have all that in there, that way I could cut and move around things very precisely within the DAW to line everything up precisely and uh, make any edits like this. But uh, again, we don't have that in Audacity, so we just kind of have to make do. All right, so now if I play, uh, let me line these two up first and then we'll edit those things. And again, it's a different performance, and I may have been on, off the beat differently because uh, of the lag I was hearing from the playback, one versus the other one, and then trying to adjust to what I hear in the metronome versus what I hear in the previous track that I recorded. So there could be some differentiation between those issues. So uh, obviously we don't have, it didn't go down to nothing here and we can still hear those bad notes. So we need to bring this all the way down to nothing. Okay, so it gives us a little bit of an automatic curved out fade, which is pretty good. And let's just go ahead and we'll bring that in here. And I will bring up the gain so that they're at the same volume level right now. Gain is negative one. So I'll bring the gain so that it's the same. OK, 
Okay, and then again, I want to do the same thing down here on this third track because I had I wanted to make the let me make sure that the ending was good enough to use as usable. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, that's what I adjusted that because we had that. Um, I was too close to the microphone before. Now I don't have any much of anything going on here, but I'm going to zero that down to to nothing. And of course, I could be really totally safe and and select all that and delete it and move it over. But uh, now, I, and I just muted the I muted the um, click track for a minute just so I could hear the balance of those better. All right, so now we're going to double click there to give us a node and. Bring that down to nothing. All right, let's see how that works. Oh, and I'm I soloed that one track, so I just want to hear these three. Okay, so obviously there's a big difference between these two here um, because of the the recording volume level, the gain, and also um, I didn't adjust the timing perfectly, so. Pull the gain down just a little bit here to help adjust for that. So uh, yeah, I think I will try to make the temp, oops, make the tempo a little bit more uh, correct here. Uh, let's see. I, obviously, I was doing a little bit of rushing in my initial performance, and that affected these other tracks in the performance too. So yeah, if you're going to do multiple takes, it might be a good idea to mute each take that you did. That way, the the lag isn't affecting one track to the next, as it is here. There's kind of a cascade of it gets worse timing wise as we go. Uh, so we can adjust that a little bit with our wave file files moving them back and forth um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut whoops yeah I'll cut if I can you don't let me no nope. because I have the envelope down let me undo the envelope thing and then maybe it'll let me cut this other stuff out okay just so that I don't have to deal with it Yeah, working with Audacity is definitely more difficult than working with uh, other DAW digital audio workstation software. Uh, but again, it's it's free and it does a pretty good job overall. But yeah, this is definitely much more painful, painstaking work in this capacity. Without the, uh, uh, I know we have uh, when we when we move things in DAWs, we can set the things so that it moves it precisely by one sixteenth note or we can set it to even microseconds, move this over by one microsecond, uh, uh, the grid settings so that we can really precisely get everything lined up, uh, which is good, especially if you know that you have a, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a 50 second, a 50 millisecond, that's a lot, but a 50 millisecond lag time between one thing and the other, you know, you can set it to 50 seconds and scooch things over and get it just to, so that it's precisely where it needs to be in the sound uh, and right on the beat. All right, I could do the same thing with that track to delete. <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't. I really don't want to delete all that stuff, though. I mean, I just, you know. I, and again, this is the, you know, Audacity's limitations. I can't um, mute out just one section of the track. Uh, well, I could if I split and all that kind of thing, but it, it gets to be kind of difficult. So, let me see here. All right, we'll bring that in like that. <laughs> Mute these two. Let me try to line that up. It feels like it's a little behind the beat there, so. Gone and 
done too much. Let me undo everything I just did. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult without doing it in a professional <laughs> audio software. So this one should line up with that one, I think. That might. And then we, we can, then we can adjust the envelope. There we go. Okay. And it's better lined up with the metronome. Yeah, obviously I was rushing a little bit here. So that's uh, pretty good overall as far as, I, I mean, definitely not professional, but uh, it, you get the idea of I got these to line up the strummings, patterns, and it, with the metronome pretty decently. And uh, and then uh, now I have a cohesive track from one to the other. And now what I can do is just um, let me bring, I'm going to change the envelope here so that this one comes in. And then maybe roll this note back just a teeny bit. Yeah. So with the gain change that I made here to make the uh, the level better from my recording, again, that last take, the third take, I did too close to the microphone, so I needed to bring the gain down so that it matched the gain of these two better. And then using the envelope tool, I was able to morph from one take to the next take to the next tape, um, the the strumming patterns, I and then I used that click track to help line everything up. So that's, that's the reason why we like to use click tracks in recordings is because we definitely want to make sure that... Uh, we have good tempo. Um, uh, there are some purists that that insist that you know when you play as a group, you don't use a metronome or a click track so that you can have that that flow of the music, the swing in the music. And and I totally understand that. It, uh, definitely, uh, there's some merit to that as far as you know. We don't record classical music to a click track. Um, we use our ears to listen and follow the conductor and so forth. And so I, you know, that's definitely there's definitely merit to that. But if you, especially if you're collaborating on something, if you have a click track. In the background, it's going to make it much easier for everybody to know exactly where the beat is. If there's a if there's a t tempo change in the music, then everybody can follow the exact same tempo change. So that that's why we like to use click tracks in the music. So uh, that gives you the idea of um, kind of doing a different tr uh, different tracks and different takes, and then kind of splicing them together to make one cohesive track that's better. Okay. So that's that. And then we'll go back to the larger project now and I'll finish doing this with my guitar and ukulele tracks and then I'll do the vocal track. See you later.